between one thing and the other. And you, you can do it in a kind of well-defined way. Um, and I want you to kind of think about what's, what's the relationship between, between these two and what happens when, um, and really what connects these concepts and the way which we, uh, we deal with things. But um, I want to highlight just at least one section or two um, from chapter five. Um, which I don't know if you guys found interesting as well, um, is that idea of, well, so we, got, we have recursion here, and we can do all sorts of different things, right? Um, Kern showed you how we can construct fractals and trees and mountains and all sorts of beautiful things, and, and we can actually create all sorts of, uh, he, with the uh, recursive transition networks, we can get recursive programs to uh, create sentences and, and language. So then it appears that, well, If recursion is at the heart of intelligence, um, why are humans so bad at it? And two, is it really going to be what leads us to creativity and creating a computer which we can't distinguish from a man or from a person? Um, and it's, it's funny, just to show kind of the date on this book, um, Douglas Hofstadter actually says, you know, People, people said it would only take 10 years before we could create a program, a, a computer program that would be the world champion in chess. And of course, from then they said it would take another 10 years, and then another 10 years. So he's kind of alluding to the idea that it would never happen. But sure enough, in the early 90s, IBM had developed Deep Blue, um, who beat Kasparov, you know, the then world ch champion at chess. And it was kind of a triumph showing that the way in which a human thinks and the way that in a human plays chess is very much more intuitive than kind of an analytical problem solving. Try as you might to, you know, think like, well, and this is what he was talking about replying a recursive algorithm is you basically analyze all possible moves and then you choose whichever one would be worst for your opponent. And then in deciding what move they're going to make in the next step, you apply the same method except you take on your opponent's role and you say, well, analyze all the possible moves given that one, and what would be the worst move for them? And then you continue this. And depending on how far out you can search this tree, right, we have this conceptual tree of chess moves, um, really helps give you an advantage. But Kasparov doesn't think like that. The way Kasparov thinks is he intuits something. And, he, and that's really kind of a magical element of human intelligence, which we haven't yet been able to capture with our computer programs. Um, yet somehow Deep Blue was able to beat him. And this is kind of a, I think this is an interesting example of recursion, what its role in intelligence is, and whether it's going to be the final answer. Um, just to give you kind of a quick show of things to, things to do, I'm not talking much about chapter five just because uh, we've read that, we've done that, we, you've had an entire lecture on, on recursion and its possible roles. I want you guys to pay careful attention to chapter six, um, which is your reading assignment for next time. Because there you're going to fundamentally ask the question of, of how do we get meaning? How do we know that our words mean anything? So the idea of developing a theory of meaning, of language, goes back to the idea that suppose I were to plop you down on an island in the middle of nowhere, and you know all these people are going, oh, da, 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 and they're speaking their own kind of language, um, and you have no idea what it means, right? Um, Yet, you're stuck there, you depend on them for survival, and you figure it might be a good idea to go ahead and start learning their language. How would you go about doing that? So suppose you go out on your hunting missions with this, you know, this tribe, and every time there's a rabbit which, which you know, gallops through, one of the guys says, Gavagai, Gavagai. And you're like, okay, I, I'm going to create an internal dictionary here. I'm going to write a dictionary for this language, and I know that, I know that Gavagai uh, I don't know if that's how you spell it. Um, that's equivalent to uh, rabbit. But now let's let's switch roles. Let's suppose you're one of those um, one of those native people, and you you kind of believe, and part of your culture is that you never really view something as greater than the sum of its parts. So when you say "gabagai," you don't actually mean the whole rabbit but you just mean undetached rabbit part. 
So because the second when you start splitting up the rabbit and you're cooking it and you have its leg over the open fire, it's no longer gabagai. Just like when we refer to a cow, we usually talk about beef. And same with a pig, we usually talk about pork once we start eating it. Because we have this idea of connecting gabagai to the full rabbit. But they actually want that to be undetached rabbit part, which has a completely different conceptual network for them than it does for us. So this equivalence isn't true. And this comes, this is actually be a very rigorous problem which presents itself in the theory of meaning and language. And we're going to begin focusing on that and the role of isomorphisms in this, in the next lecture. So go ahead, Latif, you have a question? Uh, so then how are you going to learn the language? How are you going to learn the language? Well, we can obviously develop some sort of functional apparatus, like I'm, you know, I can get close to a rabbit, but how do we actually decipher meaning? Right? We can obviously learn a language in some ways, and in some ways it's the same. How do you know what I say is exactly what you want me to say? And no, it never does mean the same thing. And that's, an exact, that's exactly it. So then how do we develop a theory of meaning? But plenty of good questions. Good questions for, t for next lecture, and uh, turn in the surveys, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Class dismissed.